I push the button again. How it happens. <clears throat> so let me get right into this. All right. What we have is the story about uh, the battle of our conscience. When when you get this this idea of how how tall he is, this is a nine and a nine. I think I already went over this business with consciousness, lower conscious and higher consciousness. That that's the duality that we're presented with. And, you know, in a few stories back, we found that, uh, you know, with the two with the two kingdoms that are presented, the human being, that the, that the lower mind comes a lot stronger, is bigger, whatever, more mightier, and is quite capable of kicking the spiritual side of us out, out to the curb. So... <clears throat> What you find here is this is a battle of consciousness. We have King Saul as one of the uh, uh, participants in this. Uh, he just comes off of a racking headache that God gives him, and and that's how he is introduced to, to David in the first place as a guy that plays a harp. And this meaning of the harp is that God, David being connected to God, that he that he serves his father and his sheep. So you're talking about his father, which is the sheep. You know, the idea is this is usually a feminine role where the females are taking over sheep and stuff. But you know, the idea is that, that he's serving, he's serving God already. That's the main point of this. That's why he is this Jew. So Jews are all... Uh, in this book, you're just supposed to understand that all of them are connected to God already. They have the seed of God in them, okay? And this is not talking about Jewish people. Okay. It's all those people that have gone inside and planted the seed within them, and they are nurturing it and keeping it alive. So you wind up that this king has him just like, uh, just like he would if it was Esther, finding someone that would really work for him, that could, that could take care of him. And this first deed of his was actually to solve his headaches. He was, he was a mean man. He, got, he was angry. And, and when he was angry, he, he, he couldn't control himself. And then, you know, uh, he would have to summon someone to help him. And if that didn't work, he would kill them or do something or smite them. And so uh, his council got together and said, we got to search our kingdom for somebody that could, you know, play the harp for him and make him feel better. And, of course, they wound up finding David son of Jesse and they are from this Bethlehemite place you know so I'm just going to tell you probably, probably from some form of heaven okay because remember there's always like uh, Laban and there's that uh, Jethro guy these people represent this this father this fatherly figure that we would call God all right but not Saul Saul is king king is you king is is you're talking about you and so what you do is you always when you go into meditation it, it the seed that they talk about is a child and so that's what they kind of play off on David David is the son of somebody and he's also just a boy so this is still gonna play out <clears throat> what happens is there's a fight between there's a current fight between the Philistines and the Israeli army you know, sounds kind of crazy, don't it? Over land, you know. And the Philistines are, are, are you know, pretty much headed up by this monster called Goliath. And um, he makes a big impression on the group. And he's, when he says, you know, hey, instead of us all, like, fighting each other, you know, let's just get one guy out there. Bring one man among you to come fight me. And if he kicks my ass... We will, the Philistines will be your servants forever. And if I kick his ass, you'll be my servants forever. Alright? So, that's pretty much the way it was. And when the people saw him, you know, he had this brass helmet on and this brass this and the, a chain mail, you know, and all of this, all of this armament, you know. And it scared these guys. It scared them swords and so, I love hearing those kinds of ways, the way they talk in the Bible now. But, uh, what happened was that they wound up saying, well, you know, uh, I don't know about this, you know. The guy even said, he says, you know, I'll give you 40 days. I'll give you 40 days to find someone before I destroy you. 
All right, so this is this is a decree. You know, God usually says, "I, I'll give you." See those Ninevites over there? I want you to go and tell them, give them my word. You know, this is when He's talking to Jonah. Go and give them my word, or within forty days, I'm going to destroy them if they don't. So, this is a message coming from the lower side, saying, "Hey." You send one guy over here to take me out, or, you know, hey, I'll give you 40 days, all right? Do you understand how this works? It goes both ways. So, this big guy, this stronger side of us, this is showing up now, and it's saying, send me someone. Well, <clears throat> in between this time of him having those mean headaches, the king has already sent this, uh, this boy back home to his father's detention sheep. And uh, what his father had done to, for the Israel army is, is offered up three of his older sons to this group. And David being the youngest of them all. Okay, that makes four. Alright. So that was his little world. That's the way that works out. But um, in reality, in reality what it is, is uh, 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 he sends David to see his sons. He doesn't go to see see the uh, the king or anything like that. He goes to see his sons. Go bring them this bread and bring them this and bring them that. So you can see there's a banquet. Something's about to happen. The, 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 the three are all joining together. The four. And, of course, the countdown comes on. And he says, wow, check this out. You guys are in the middle of a battle. And the kids and guys are saying, what are you doing here? Oh, you, 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 uh, you rascal for coming out here. You know, you're too young. You should go back home. You know, and so you know he catches wind. He hears what Goliath is saying to these guys, and and, and everybody's shivering and running from this guy's side. And he's like, you know, who is this uncircumcised, you know, Palestinian or not? Oh God, we're gonna get in trouble for that. No, it's that. Well, there's a lot of people that aren't uncircumcised, but is this that uncircumcised motherfucker coming in here talking about the Lord's army like that? You know. And, you know, that he's going to just cleave us up and tear us up and make us all into their, his, uh, you know, into, and, and, and into their slaves. And what are you guys doing? What's wrong with you guys? And they're all like, you know, we're all scared, you know. Uh, you know, uh, the king's going to offer up his daughter and all this stuff, you know. But we just can't find anybody to do it. The time's drawing near. Well, I'll be damned, he says. Well, I'll do it. So he goes, he has to ask the king, and the king said, well, you know, you are just a boy, young man. Your spirit, you've got good spirit in you, good gumption on you, but you're pretty young. You're just a boy. And war is no place for children. And he says, well, you know, I've been attacked by, you know, I've, I've watched my father's sheep, and when bears and lions have come up and tried to, I've, I've driven them off and taken the meat from their mouths. I've done this, I've done this, I can take this, and I will meet them and do him the same way. And, uh, well, this guy said, well, you know, you got the gumption, kid. So he says, well, you know what, you can't do it like this. So he, he fixes them up with a brass helmet and brass plates and brass this and a big sword. <clears throat> he says, I know nothing of this stuff. You know, Goliath does. But uh, that's how it all works. He says, "I'm just got. I've, all I got is this. I've got these, this, this, uh, this, this stick in my hand. Remember the stick? What what does Moses do with the stick that he has in his hand? You know, they call them staves. All right. So it's just pieces of wood. I think there's two of them. So the way it is is he's going to throw one of them down. But you know, they've only got one. It's just let's not mix up all the stories. The idea is that it's what he's been using as a staff. I have this staff." And I have this sling, and that's in my hand, and that's all I need. So, do you understand? The hand is the idea that once you've got the hold of the end of the stick, it turns into the kundalini. The hand, it's all the power in the hand, and he says, that's all I need. Right? So, he also polishes up. He finds five stones, and he puts them in his satchel, you know, his little um, shepherd's bag of some kind. All right, and he just like he bolts out to go and take on this guy right off the bat. Just whoosh, I'm ready to go. I don't need any of those things. I'm just going to take all what I have here. So he reached into his bag when he saw this guy and saw what was going on. He was like, "This man, this is this, this Goliath." Roars out and says, "Is this the best you guys, have, you Israelites, have to offer? Is this the best?" 
And what is this? He says, I'm a soldier of God. A soldier? He says, I don't see any, I don't, I don't see any weapons. And he shows him sticks, he sees the sticks, he says, what am I, a dog that you come and shake your sticks at me? And he says, these are the strongest weapons under God's, you know, under God's, you know, whatever. You know, it's just the strongest weapons, you know. Oh, well, let's see how strong those weapons are, you know. So, he reaches into his bag, pulls out one stone, puts it in his sling, and he sits back there, and it seems like a really long time that he's slinging this around. He's made, made fun of by the other guy across the ways. As he starts to, he lifts his sword and starts his charge. David lets loose, and that stone drives right into the, the forehead of this monster, sinks in, and they say this kills him, and he falls forward on his face, which is, we know when people fall on their face, it's a, it's a meditation phase. It's mean they're knocked out, and this is where, the tr this is number seven, this is where the help comes in, and where you're going to quell the animal. And so, having no sword of his own, remember, because he just came by himself. He just came with his own self. <coughs> Grabbed Goliath's sword and cuts his head off with it. And then he goes off fighting more people. So, you see, and that restores the day. It puts everything on the even. Remember? On the even. And he says... I can, he, when, the, when he says, what do you come to me with sticks for? And he says, you know, listen, I can get, I can, I can whip your ass even without the stick. All right? So that word even pops in all the time when hell is about to break loose or when there's about to have some kind of an intervention. All right? So what happens is, is right before that, he had run into his brothers, and his brothers were saying not to do all this. So this is these interventions. And then he goes and meets the God, and God tells him what to do. And then, boom, he's gone. It's just a wonderful story that about maintaining, fighting something that's bigger than you. And the only thing I can really think of that would work like that is like AA, when people have Alcohol Anonymous or something. And uh, they, they say that, you know, that you, you can't fight it on your own because there's something stronger. It's stronger than you are. You know, this is just bearing, bearing witness to the idea that the lower conscious and this drive towards our free will and the heart, our heart really wants this, this lower world of ours so bad that it's willing to take all these wonderful chances with, it, with its life in order to obtain knowledge, you know, and it's all being fed back to the Maker, so in some way, you know, this is why they say it's God's will, whichever way you fall on this, but, uh, you know, we also know that if, uh, you know, one side's going to get a little bit too much going on, I'm, I'm ready to clean the house, I've had enough of this, you know, so people say, well, you should just let them, people believe what they want, and I said, I've had enough, I'm, if I could make them think that there's another way of going about it. I've, I think I've pulled at least two people out of hell. You know, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's two more people bearing light that's out there that weren't there before. Right? And uh, remember that this was a... Uh, this is a path taken by very few people. Very few people ever learn all this stuff. Let alone do it. And so, you know, you want to think about, you know, hey... Do you go along with the crowd? The crowd that killed Jesus, the crowd that went along with the with the introduction of of, of the status quo and religion getting together <clears throat> and talking you into the lower side of life by killing the Jesus and all of his teachings with it and turning it into a religion instead. This is an escape from that. And I'm showing you one one story at a time that they're really about meditation and how to maintain the monster not how to create one but if that's the outside of the Bible is your you know if that's where you pitch your tent you know well enjoy your poverty you know it's basically God's will you know that was your choice is what it's saying and uh, and and if it wasn't because you didn't know any other choice now you've heard one and uh, seek it 
try to find out. It didn't cost you nothing. All right, except uh, your uh, <clears throat> it it causes your lobotomy because after that your your brain fills back in, you know, <laughs> as best it can. All right, I'll see you later, guys, and best to you. Love you.